and welcome Angelinos. We thank you for tuning in to yet another brilliant episode of the Galaxy Guy podcast, hosted by Chris Maldonado, a show made by Loyal Galaxy fans for Loyal Galaxy fans who bleed blue, white and gold. So join us as we talk about the ins and outs, as well as the ups and downs of your favourite team, the one and only, the Los Angeles Galaxy. Hola y bienvenidos, Angelinos. Welcome back, Galaxy fans, to the Galaxy Guy podcast. Como siempre, I'm your host, Chris Maldonado, and we are coming to you today with a very, very hot, hot show. Uh, Temperature-wise, steam, it's there. There will definitely be some ranting today, some smoke blowing. Casey and Matt might even yell, so it's going to be <laughs> steamy. We, of course, will be talking about this past Saturday's disastrous, disastrous 2-1 to loss to the worst team in the Western Conference and one of the worst overall in the league, the Vancouver Whitecaps, of course. So, como siempre, as always, we'll be covering the lead-up to the game. We'll be providing an in-depth post-game analysis, some stat breakdown, and, of course, we're going to be talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly of the game. Listen, I, I have a feeling that 90% of this show will be centered around the bad and the ugly, right? Because this game was <laughs> this game was straight up Uncle Fester levels of ugly. So we'll talk about all of that to help us make sense of all of this and, and really, you know, get deep into it. We have joining us some of the usuals. We've got the man with the stats, Mr. Casey Gagel. Hola, Casey. Uh, hey. With us as well is the voice of reason, Mr. Matt Granger, who is unapologetic and tells it like it is. Um, how the heck are you guys doing today? Casey, let's start with you, brother. I, I, I know you've been ha having the roughest week so far. Please tell us how you're doing. Yeah, you know, I had a pretty interesting weekend last last weekend. Um, got in a car accident on Friday and then in a completely separate incident playing Australian rules football for the LA Dragons. Uh, on Saturday, I ended up uh, breaking my tibia and fibula uh, clean in half. So I'm coming to, coming to you live from my bed right now where I'm uh, held up with a cast and uh, riding high on the pain meds and ready to talk some galaxy. So <laughs> appreciate you having me on again. Uh, I, listen, man, I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry that happened to you. I saw the x-ray that you posted on Instagram, and it was just like <laughs> a clean cut right through. You said that happened on a jump? Yeah, so I was playing Australian rules football, um, and, you know, there's a lot of uh, jump balls involved in the game, and I was going up for a jump ball, and, and kind of a freak accident. I landed on my left foot, and, uh, yeah, my tibia and fibula just snapped. So, uh, you know, luckily I got all the care I needed. EMS was quick to respond. It got all the uh, care I uh, was looking for at Scripps Medical Center down there, so... Feeling good now and uh, long road to recovery, but I'm ready to go. Right on, man. Well, listen, I'm glad you're doing better. Uh, we we uh, pray we pray that uh, you you get a, a, a fast recovery and you're back out there as soon as possible. Uh, and Appreciate we're, it. We're glad you we're glad to have you, and I'm glad you made the time to come on with us despite your condition. So, um, anytime. We're good, man. And and Matt, let me let me ask you, dude. Um, How's your week been so far? It's been it's been better than than Casey's. Um, <laughs> I lost I lost five pounds this week. Me and my wife are dieting. It's going great. Um, although oh, I I kind of wish it was last week when when Casey's biggest problems were just getting sunburned instead of doing his best Hunter Greg McGregor. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. Jesus. We talked about this. All the cool kids are doing it. Everyone's All breaking the kids their are foot. Breaking <laughs> awesome man oh that's good to hear um congratulations man i mean five yeah. pounds is a is a good is a good yeah. it's good progress in one week yeah. that's yeah. good on the right way that's good yeah as as far as i'm concerned i was having a a fantastic week um been playing soccer felt great better than i have in a very long time and today i was having a high this morning spending some family time by the pool at my brother's place and 
I took a slip on the concrete and my knee just went straight into the corner of one of the concrete steps. And oh. I've been limping all day. I have a, a like a grapefruit sized lump on my knee, but um, oh, no. no idea how I'm going to play soccer this week. I'm definitely not as bad as Casey. I'm still able to get around. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes. But this is awful, man. Everyone on the galaxy is getting injured, even the podcasters. <laughs> <laughs> no, and knee knocks are never fun. So yeah. I wish you a speedy recovery on that too, Chris. Yeah, man. Hey, I'll, I I might have to get on some of those pain meds soon. <laughs> but uh, it might actually help, you know, with these uh, galaxy losses, man. It's painful. But listen, today's episode is certainly going to be good. We have a lot of great stuff to cover. Um, we're going to do the usual stuff, but. Before we get started, I, I would really love to take a brief moment just to thank all of the viewers of this show for helping us grow as much as you have in the past year, the half year that we've been doing it. Um, there have been hundreds upon hundreds of you who have made this show possible, each and every single one of you. And I don't say it just to say it. I really do truly mean it, uh, and I mean it when I say it. I appreciate each and every one of you out there. Yes, you watching this right now, listening to this at work, on your way home, in the evening, whenever that is. Uh, it is because of you that we make this show. So, muchísimas gracias a toda mi gente. I want to thank everybody from deep within. So, we'll continue to do it as long as people watch, right? Even if it's one or two. So, with that said, and without further ado... Let's get into the meat of this very, very moldy sandwich this week. You know, this, this very moldy sandwich that we had to eat this last week. Um, Casey, Matt, what do you guys say we talk about that match? Shall we do, do it? it? Yep. Let's do it. Great. Let's do it. As, as we kick off this show, as we kick off this conversation about Vancouver and L.A. this past Saturday, um, let's talk about the buildup to this game, right, as we always do. Uh, the Galaxy was coming off a 10-day break, so we can't really blame tired legs for this. Okay, They had time off. They had several days off. Um, they were also coming off a 3-1 to -one win over Dallas in their last game. So mentally, the guys should have been right. We can't blame a previous loss for lack of focus, right? Uh, they were coming off a win. So, uh, of course, in the lead-up to this game, you also have to consider the standings. Right, And L.A. was sitting pretty in third place in the conference and fourth overall in the MLS standings, which is pretty damn good. L.A. Galaxy hasn't been in a position that good in a very long time. Right, They've been a pretty consistent team this season. Vancouver, on the other hand, going into this match, was sitting dead last in that Western Conference and second overall worst in the league. So tale of two, tale of two stories here, right, between these two teams. Matt, you called this game a trap game before it ever even kicked off. Why is that? Um, I think just like the like the old adage says, right? Like pride uh, precedes the fall. Um, you talk to any Galaxy fan. I'm sure if you had talked to any player, everyone just expected to win this game. Um, and then that's exactly when things go wrong for you, right? Like I think if you had seen the last Vancouver game, that also should have been an easy game for us, and it wasn't. Um, right. We... Uh, we, we played really bad in spite of like just the, the elevation, the fact that the ball was just traveling uh, more. So I thought going into this game with, you know, twice as much confidence, we would, we would inevitably find a way to uh, mess it up with, with being three times as arrogant. Um, and I think we had actually <laughs> talked about on our own, you know, little side text group where I thought we would go down two to one and need to equalize late. And it just never came. Right. Um, that's just kind of the way it happens. It's been my experience playing sports myself. Is there's always one of those that one game that you lose against the last place team that the coach is just going to ream you and you're going to remember it for the rest of your life. And I thought there was a high probability this would have, this would be it for the Calgary. Right. You did call it, man. I have to say, I don't know if I should be upset with you or, <laughs> or <laughs> people people on Matt the Discord. Is, Matt is the Oracle. Hey, hey people on the on Confirmed. the people on the family on the Galaxy Family Discord were calling you. What were they calling you, Matt Stradamus? <laughs> <laughs> Stop being right, man. 
Um, but yeah, it's 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 fun times. I mean, we 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 talked about it during the game. Um, we talked about it as I mentioned on the on the Galaxy Family Discord, which is a, a great place, amazing atmosphere. Every game day, you'll find us there. Even if we're at the game, if we're at a viewing party, wherever. We're always active in that thread. There's hundreds of people there that are always active. It makes the, the, the game day experience that much better because if the Galaxy's winning and they're doing great, you have other people to share in that joy with, right? And it's fantastic. Uh, if the Galaxy's sucking like they did on Saturday, you have people to vent with that will listen and they'll vent with you right back. So a uh, phenomenal place. You guys should join us. If you're watching this right now and you are not yet a part of the Galaxy Family Discord, I highly encourage that you join. It is the largest Discord community, the Galaxy Discord community, currently on Discord. So uh, stop being an old person. Come join the Come join the young crowd on Discord. It's hip. It's fun. Uh, there's memes, funny stuff, so a lot of great events. Can't promote it enough because it is a great platform. But with that said, Casey, I have to ask you, going into this game, okay, the Vancouver Whitecaps, absolute dumpster fire so far this season, right? Uh, they've lost seven of their 12 matches. They've tied three. And prior to the Saturday's game, they had only won two games all season should have this should this have been a hands-down victory for the la galaxy it, sh it should have you know considering vancouver's current state uh internally uh, it's kind of a weird chicken and egg situation with vancouver where you don't really remember where the lack of quality came from whether it was the exit of alfonso davies and all of the weird financial fallout that came there or the complete disparity between the fan base and front office um, it's, it's just kind of led to this, uh, hollow club, uh, you know, that formerly used to compete regularly in the, the Western conference and they've become the whipping boy, um, this, this lap around the sun in our division. So it, it did, did look like a guaranteed three points. Um, but you know, as I'll get into in, in my bad portion, you know, Marco Santos is a bit of an opportunist and these games are kind of his bread and butter, um, rally his troops to get back on on form so yeah, as we'll discuss uh, you know it, it, it completely fell into their hands so sure the writing was on the wall from the get-go sure in, in in all honesty i expect this to be a win right um i i i believed matt when he said this was a trap game it certainly felt like it but just 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 looking at the record vancouver's had all season i was like you know what the galaxy has this uh it was perhaps that sense of confidence that i had and other fans had that maybe the players shared in as well and they got too overly confident with themselves uh which is obviously the result that we saw on saturday and in all honesty even a tie would have felt like a loss for us in this game right because of the condition that vancouver currently is Absolutely. sitting in um I know that uh, you guys want to talk a little bit about that starting lineup, right? There was some takes on that. Um, let's talk a little bit about that starting lineup. What what stood out to you guys from that starting lineup? Okay, it's been a little bit different than we've seen in the last couple of weeks because some players were returning. Uh, we saw the return of Derek Williams, who was on suspension for, was it five total games? Um, that gave Ryan Revelson the opportunity to go back to his natural position in that center defensive midfield position. So but any takes on that, guys, the starting starting lineup for FRLA? I mean, really, it was the, the best lineup we could have fielded considering all of the, the Gold Cup absences. And, you know, from a tactical perspective as well, you kind of have Vancouver playing different variations of a 4-3-3. So it seemed a little uh, natural to, to pair up with them uh, in that regard. So... Uh, it was good. I think, you know, there are some good aspects of this that I was going to maybe get into in my, in my good, um, good points. So I'll, I'll expand on this a little later. Sure. Matt, anything that stood out to you? Any pluses that you saw from that starting lineup? I, I thought it was a good starting lineup, to be yeah. perfectly honest. I, I looked at the starting lineup and I thought to my, and I, I thought like, okay, this is good enough to win. And mm -hmm. this is good, like probably good enough to win easily. Um, mm -hmm. I was a little concerned with the lack of depth on the bench. Mm -hmm. Um, but even even then, like even then, I I thought the lineup was fine. I, I had no problems with it. I was I was pretty excited about it. it was good to see Williams back in. 
Um, I was really happy to see Ryan in his in his natural position. But no, that that lineup was fine. That lineup would is good enough to at minimum compete with the majority of the league. There was no problems with me yeah. there. I was naturally a bit concerned with uh um as I have been most of the season with uh Sasha starting, right? Uh I am of the belief that he's a fantastic player, one of the better passers that we have on the team, one of the most experienced, if not the most experienced. The guy just knows how to play really well in that position. But my concern with him has been that, especially as a starter, my concern has been that he is 35. He's never been fast to begin with. Uh, he's a lot He's a lot slower now that he's 35, right? Uh, so that was my concern. Vancouver is a, I don't want to say a fast team, but they have speedy players. They have young players. And I, 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 I knew it from the start. Listen, this can really bite us in the butt. Right, if if uh, if we don't have that youth and that speed in the midfield, uh, Ryan can't do it all by himself. Right, Victor is up there; he's up there in age as well. So that was my concern with the starting lineup, and it kind of came back to bite us in the butt. Right in that second half. So those were my takes on the starting lineup. Uh, we'll get back; we'll get into it a little bit more. But uh, as we do on the show, right, we have to dive a little bit deeper into some stuff. Uh, and and we do that by moving into a, a, the section of the show where we talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Okay, so uh, naturally we have to talk about the good first. We'll get started on that. Um, despite the loss, there were some good moments, right, in this game. Uh, it's going to be a short segment here for sure, and I'm sure most people will echo what we say here uh, because there were only a, a handful of good moments, but there were some good moments. Um, um, Casey, why don't why don't you get us started on that? I know that uh, when you showed me your notes earlier, you actually had some good moments for this game. So, yeah, you know, I think the the initial lineup gave us a lot to be hopeful for. You know, like I said, it was probably the best lineup we could field considering a lot of the the Gold Cup absences. It was a four three three, which was kind of a little different from sort of the four two three one we've been seeing. Um, so, you know, you have this center back pairing of Dupuy and Williams, which is probably our full strength center back pairing. If you consider um, the other options, uh, of course, Villafania and uh, Araujo on the wings as well. Um, the return of Williams after his long suspension, I think a lot of people were really itching to see him back in action. Um, and then you had Revelison behind Sasha and Vasquez, which I think in theory, works great because, you know, you want Sasha and Victor Vasquez to be able to pick their heads up and see the right opportunity and, and right ball and right option to, uh, to pass to. So I think, I think that works well. And when you plug players back in like Leggett and, and um, Efrain Alvarez, you know, I think you'll find a lot more efficiency in that, in that midfield system going forward. Um, then front three, you had Grand Sears, Zubak and Cabral. Um, Grand Sears and Zubak, obviously, Regular starters uh, at full strength. Um, and, you know, we know Zubak can be comfortable filling in up top. Um, <laughs> although I did see some pretty funny uh, dead fish memes of, of Ethan Zubak on the Discord. Because uh, we we do know he does have some some uh, stamina issues, longevity issues. Can't sometimes go the full 90, especially in those conditions. It was something like 90 degrees and humid at altitude. So, I mean, that's yeah. tough for any player. But, uh, you know... All in all, in theory, this was a really good lineup uh, on paper, but <laughs> we'll get into the bad and ugly of, of, of how everything unraveled. But, you know, it, it, it gives everybody some optimism seeing this kind of efficient of a lineup considering um, how depleted our, our roster is at the moment. So, For sure. Matt, I have to get your take on this. What were your good moments for the, uh, for the match? I think uh, my good moment was uh, was Ryan uh, Revelison. Um, I he he obviously got our goal, um, mm -hmm. but even prior to that goal, like he had been spotting up that 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 uh, location. Um, I think Via Fani had tried to get to him, but the pass was blocked. But he was wide open there, and then finally Victor Vasquez uh, spotted him in the middle. I think if you watch um, Ryan's off the ball movement, it's actually really impressive. He he has mm -hmm. a total nose for finding him for finding the dangerous space on the offensive third. Um, and I think that's something we've kind of been lacking a little bit. Um, some of our players tend to hide behind other players or not really know where they're supposed to be. He doesn't have that issue. And he has the ambition, even as a defensive midfielder, 
to to go get his goals and, and we're seeing it in in the short amount of time he's played he's already has two goals um in addition to that i mean he's made he made mls team of the week at center back which is like a backup position for that man so <laughs> i'm just like beyond impressed with him yeah. um it's not to say that his entire game was perfect it wasn't he did have a couple of string of bad passes but at, at the end of the day like you know he's He's trying to play, hold the whole, hold down the whole midfield defensively uh, for two 35 year olds. You know, mm-hmm. he, he's going to get tired. He's going to make bad passes. Sometimes the players in the midfield honestly just left them on an island and sure. that resulted in turnovers. But he, he, for the time he was in there, he got into like 10 duels. He won the majority of them. Um, I just continue to find him to be an amazing player. And I think uh, my scouting report and then my early call that he'll end up being the top three defensive mid in the league, I'm feeling much stronger about it. Absolutely, you did. You did say that. Mm-hmm. Listeners who are 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 are, uh, are listeners to our show every week will remember that when Matt said that. Uh, this was when he was announced as a signing. Uh, Matt did a deep dive on the uh, scouting for Ryan, and he said it. He called it. Listen, this guy's going to be good. From what I've seen, he's going to be one of the top three. So, so far, man, I can't say you were the wrong. Oracle. The Oracle, Matt Stradamus strikes again, dude. I'm going to have you. You're going to start a cult. <laughs> you're gonna have people. You're gonna have people leaving sacrificial lambs on your front door, dude. This is take it easy, man. <laughs> Listen, the galaxy community doesn't need any more cultish type. <laughs> do you have any? Uh, do you have any lottery numbers you can send over, Matt? Dude? <laughs> we got plenty of those characters around. <laughs> but... Hey, listen, that's right. You have to pick out my next lottery numbers, man. I have to leave, I have to leave this state. I need money for a house. <laughs> but uh, no, that's good. Listen, um, Ryan, Ryan uh, Ravellison has been phenomenal. Okay, three games in, what I've seen from the guy, what most people have seen from the guy. Safe to say that so far this season, he has been currently, I would say, our second best signing of the season. Our best signing being Jonathan Bond, of course. Uh, We still have to see a little bit more from Ryan, but it may turn out that at the end of the season, he ends up being the best signing the Galaxy made all season. So um, listen, the the guy had an early goal, that fifth-minute goal. He just found the spot. He was open wide by himself i mean granted the vancouver the vancouver defense is a dumpster fire they are terrible they are one of the worst defenses in the league um but as a center defensive midfielder to have that nose right to have that eye that meant the the mentality to get yourself into those spots where you're able to score goals that says a lot about him right um sure his passing later in the game was a bit sloppy um then again who who you know the galaxy was just so disjointed. I just chop it up to that, right? Uh, individually, he was pretty solid. Um, by the way, some people are calling him Revolution. Um, <laughs> some some people are calling him. I know Joe Tatino and Kobe Jones are calling him that in the live broadcasts. Um, despite being Malagasy of Malagasy descent, you know, from Madagascar, his last name is French. And uh, as some of you out there will know, Madagascar at some point was a French colony. So, so Rav, Ravelison, Ravelison is definitely French origin. Um, and it's confirmed through howtopronounce.com that it is definitely pronounced Ravelison. So I guess we'll go with that. Does it really matter? I don't think it does. I just <laughs> thought I would throw that out there. Uh, you could call him whatever you want. Ravellison, Revolution, uh, it doesn't matter. Ryan. <laughs> Ryan. We'll just go with Ryan. Ryan. <laughs> Sounds more American. It's easy to say Ryan, right? Uh, so we'll go with that. Uh, but anywho, just how good has Ryan been for this team? Um, three games in, two of which he played as a center back. You remember his first game, his first game for LA, Sega went down and Ryan had to play the rest of the game in that center back position. Uh, second game, same thing. He filled in, in the, as a center back because, you know, uh, Steris was still out. Uh, Sega was out. Beepo is out. Uh, you know, Derek was suspended. So he filled that center back position. So far, three games in, he is our second highest goal scorer on the team, tied with Sasha for the second highest goal scorer on the team. And that is crazy when you think about it. A guy that's played two 
two games of center back out of position, just got to LA, already has two goals. And don't even get me started on our other French signings, whose sole purpose <laughs> on this team is to score goals, right? And to give us his. And yet they don't have that many goals combined. So, uh, but we'll get into that. And I can already see it on Matt's face. He's itching to talk about that. Uh, but we'll get there. Uh, Ryan Revelson, fantastic player. Biggest good of this game. And I don't think there really was much else to talk about as far as good things this game, right? Um, one other thing before we move on to the ugly, since we are talking about Ryan and we're, we're, we're talking about him so highly, do you guys believe this brings up the question, is Jonathan Dos Santos done with L.A.? Yes. I'll go first. Yeah, he is. Um, okay. I think there's, uh, I think, I think Ryan's the future. I think he's, he's the next starter. Um, I think they're probably going they They already look like they're either going to um, uh, develop Harvey or Saldana into that deep line role, at least, at least until they get a little bit more mature and they can maybe move up the field. Um I, I would imagine they're going to either keep Vasquez one more year and then go out and find another cam. And then Seb's going to be the box to box and they'll just work on developing another midfielder. I think you have to come at this point, you have to come up with reasons with how you're going to make uh, Jonah fit rather mm -hmm. than um, just assuming Jonah can fit anymore. Um, right. I think he's, I think it's over in LA for him. Yeah. Casey, what do you think is, uh, is Jonathan done with LA? Yeah, I mean, if you know, if you, if you had to do a, just a basic cost-benefit analysis of of his standing in the team at the moment, it, it doesn't make any sense to to keep him on a DP contract or any high-paying contract whatsoever, which is exactly what he would probably look for, considering you know his prestige with the Mexican national team. Um, and like Matt said, there really just isn't a place for him in this team anymore. If if Ravelison can fill in at that that cdm role and we can develop talent that can you know have potentially much higher ceiling then there's there's no need to have them around and splash that cash we've had this, this discussion a couple times before on the show where it's you know if you're not getting dp level results for dp level money then there's no point in that person being, being a dp at all so right. it's it's been a fun ride um but i think you know you just gotta sever the ties exactly um if I had asked myself this question that I just asked you guys a couple of months ago or at the start of the season even, before Ryan was ever even the, in the picture, I would have said that there's a slim chance, a very slim chance that uh, Jonathan Dos Santos could have remained on this team as a non-designated player next year, possibly a TAM player. Now, you got to remember, this is his last year on his contract, right? After this after this season, he's done. He would have to renegotiate a new contract with LA. I do think there would have been a slim chance of him coming back as a TAM player. Highly unlikely, but the slim chance was there. But with the arrival now of Ryan, I think that it's safe to say that Jonathan Dos Santos' time with the LA Galaxy comes to an end this year, at the end of this season. Uh, listen, Ryan is younger than Jonathan Dos Santos by almost a decade. Um, you know, Jonathan will be 32 by next next season. Okay, he's not getting any younger. Ryan is in his early, mid-20s, right? Uh, Ryan has already shown to be far more effective in that deep center defensive midfield role than, than Jonathan has been, right? Uh, he can actually produce goals. He's, 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 you know, sweeping the plays. He's keeping things tight back there. Uh, like I said, he's much younger. He's had a far shorter list of injuries. Jonathan Dos Santos, the injuries keep stacking up. He keeps talking about it. He says, you know what? Uh, it's it's a biomechanical thing with me, right? So he's just not working anymore. And we're not seeing enough of that play time for him to say that he's going to be on this team next year. Honestly, I think that his future is in Mexico. Okay, He goes to Mexico, possibly joins a team with his brother, and he gets paid a ton of money, then retires. I think that's the path for Jonathan Los Santos. As far as LA Galaxy, I think his time is up. I know a lot of people out there probably don't want to hear that because he's a likable guy. You know, he's, he's got a great personality. He's always smiling, but uh, just not working for us anymore. So 
it's going to be a big no for me, dog. Uh, not coming <laughs> back. Uh, but fellas, we talked about the good. Okay, mostly Ryan. Uh, but we talked about the good. Now, let's move on and talk about these bad moments. Okay, the bad moments from this game this past Saturday, LA versus Vancouver. <laughs> We go ahead and uh, let's let's kick it off. I know that when we when we talked about notes, we shared notes earlier. Casey, you had a lot of bad on there. You had some good points. I I really hope you were heavily sedated for this game on all your pain meds because this match was painful to watch, man. But why don't you get us started here? What were some bad takeaways from this match? Yeah, well, I think the the, the biggest, baddest takeaway I have from this is, you know, the slumping performance after the first goal. I mean, there was just a significant def- decline in fluidity uh, after that first goal was scored, and we took the ga- foot off the gas completely. Um, you know, there were simple giveaways in the back and the midfield third. Uh, most of the duel- duels were pretty miserable. Um, and, you know, ultimately we, we stooped down to Vancouver's level. Uh, you know, I touched on earlier that, that Mark Dos Santos has, has had to kind of play the opportunist with, with the team he has because of the lack of quality and some of the internal problems there at the club. Um, and, you know, the fact of the matter is Vancouver this season hadn't won a single game when behind at the half. Mm-hmm. And we completely gave them the keys to the second half. We gave them full control, and it, it, it was it was upsetting, and it was disgusting. But as you said, I was medicated, so you know it, it softened the blow quite a bit. Um, but you know the the, the slump in performance was was definitely the the biggest bad takeaway I have from that game because it was it was so apparent. Sure, absolutely. Um... Matt, I know you took your notes as well, and I can see it. It's written all over your face, man. Hit us with it. What did you see out there that was bad? Um, so I'll, I'll touch on Casey's point at the end because I think he, he brought up a lot of good points. But I guess my two bads were uh, one was Sasha. Um, I think your concern with him in the lineup ended up um, being very accurate. Um, I think in the game, you know, he looked he looked uh, old. He looked very slow. Um, I think that if you're it just wasn't the game um, built for given that it was like 99 degrees there at night with high elevation. It was just like, it spelled disaster for like a guy like Sasha um, who has looked more agile, but he's looked more agile in Southern California, right? Like in perfect condition. Um, His passing is a little deceptive on the stats. It says like 89% accuracy, but if you had watched the game, like you would have lost track of him because he was ghosting. It was always sideways or back, something very safe. Um, and, and, you know, having watched back the two goals that Vancouver uh, scored, um, both of them started with his turnovers in the midfield. Um, and then he turns over the ball. And like you said, you know, Sasha's never been a fast guy. He's never been a phenomenal athlete. But, you know, you put him at 35 in high elevation and high heat, and it's like he's running through sand. Um, he had a really bad game to be perfectly yeah. honest. Like it was really, really bad. I think the idea was that, you know, um, Sasha and Victor would, would kind of do what they usually do and keep and play keep away and, and sure. wait for an opportunity. And it just didn't work out that way. I think um, Sasha just kind of got exposed and like in the worst way possible. Right. Cause like, he's a very good player. He's a veteran. He's played in Europe. Um, but ultimately he got exposed by like a bunch of like very um, like football IQ wise, very immature young kids on Vancouver. Um, so I think that kind of makes it a little bit worse for me. Uh, second bad uh, was Williams. He looked like just all sorts of rusty out there. He looked really, really bad. For sure. Um, I had, think I had texted you right off the get, like in the first five, 10 minutes. Uh, I know my wife noticed it as well. It was like the passing out, out of the back was really bad. Like even when we looked better, it looked terrible. Um, right. You could just tell that Depew, Williams and Bond were just like not on the same page. Um, They were just, they didn't know who should take control because typically it's Sega, right? Sega will dribble up, take control and pass. When it's Sarah's, he he, he fills that role. Between Depew and Williams, they didn't know what to do between the two of them. And then they both just ended up over dribbling. Bond was like unsure of what he needed to do. So I think that um, lack of communication and chemistry and then the rush from Williams really led to a lot of mistakes. I know for sure, you know, one of Williams's um, 
I don't even know if it was a clearance or like a pass, but he gave it like right back to the Vancouver guy, which resulted in the first goal. Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah. it was like a really confusing error. I mean, he looked bad. I, I'm a little bit more sympathetic to him because he's coming back from a suspension, but again, yeah. a bad game is a bad game. Yeah. And he just really like set the tone for like how sloppy we were going to be throughout the game. Because I mean, we're a team that passes out of the back and if that doesn't work, it's just like a domino effect. Yeah. Um, and then I think, going to Casey's point like it was a we played very much like what most fans were so bothered by in 18 and 19 which is where the galaxy play with like a level of entitlement and pretentiousness where they just feel like they should win because they're the galaxy you know um that's at least how the vibe came off to me and I agree with Casey it was embarrassing and and listening to the discord and other people from reddit and people I've talked to it was a it was it was embarrassing and disgusting because we thought we were past that part um you know I think I, I hope Greg ripped him a new one because that's not the kind of culture we need to fall back to. Well, oh, hey, listen, I, I was in that, I was in that press conference last night after the game. Uh, they actually made us wait a lot longer than usual in order for the press conference to start. Uh, we were waiting on Greg. Okay, so I'm assuming that we waited on him that long because he was ripping into the players after the game in that locker room. At least I hope so. Hey. Right. Good. You, you, yeah. You, you need that. Okay. You need to, and then listen, I'll say this part, part of the, part of the blame. We have to talk about the blame, right guys, especially after such a disastrous lackluster performance by the galaxy, we have to put some blame on some names, right? Um, the players sure blame the players, certain players more than others. Should we blame Greg Vanny for this? Does he carry some of this weight? What do you guys think? You know, like the substitutions didn't make sense. And granted, I asked him during that press conference, you know, I, I, I asked Greg why he opted to sub out Ryan first instead of, you know, say Sasha Kleshton, right? Who looked gassed by that 70th minute when the first substitution was made. Greg said, listen, Ryan was cramping from both from both uh, calves, right? And he he was already complaining about it at half. So took him out as a preventative measure, um, kept Sasha on. That's kind of what I have a question about, right? Like, why not sub Sasha out sooner for, I don't know, an Aguirre or, or you know, another young midfielder? It would have made more sense. I, it just, I don't know, guys. Help me understand this. Who do we blame for this? Um, I, well, I'm, so well, ahead, Matt, sorry. Okay. Um, no, I think Greg should share a, a significant amount of blame. Um, <laughs> it's funny on, on the discard, there, there are some fans who actually got to travel there and they were just yelling at the team, yelling at the ref. And I think Greg actually got frustrated <laughs> and told them to be quiet, but you know, fans yell with like a full heart of honesty. And I think that was what was frustrating him was like, at the end of the day, like it kind of does fall on him. Like you need to get your team up for games to to put these things down right like you could tell from the get what was going on with the galaxy after the first goal and he couldn't inspire them and then he takes them into halftime and they come out even more flat i mean they get scored on pretty quickly after that i think right like almost like what, mm -hmm. within the first 10 minutes yeah. of half yeah that that's on him but he's he's the leader of this of this team you know a lot of a lot of teams have captains on the field that lead the teams but sometimes the leader is the coach right like every jose Mourinho team he's the leader of that team on and off the field um and in this team it's vanny vanny's that guy so if he can't inspire them if he can't make the adjustments he needs to at halftime that's 100 percent on him because we came out just as flat as, as we left at halftime so no i think he deserves a, a fair amount of the blame for mismanaging subs for putting some players like francer who went out with calf injuries as well in positions where they were overworked yeah. Casey. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, if you, if you don't mind me jumping the shark here, this is definitely my, my ugly point is, you know, the big picture of the, the overall lack of accountability that was shown on both an individual level and a managerial level and a club level as a whole, because basically, I mean, it was a poor mentality and effort from the players. First of all, I mean, players, like we talked about, everyone, Players, fans, everyone had the, the, the attitude that this was going to be a guaranteed place, right? We knew the, the dire straits that Vancouver was in, you know. Um, this, this seemed like a guaranteed win. Um, and, you know, particularly the event or the effort and events uh, leading up to Vancouver's second goal, 
like you touched on that. I mean, that was a clean take from Sasha. And he made no effort to get back defensively. He jogged back. And ultimately, we were, you know, two men down on the run, got scored on. And it was just a poor showing. And you talk about Derek Williams, who who looked so scrappy and so rusty yesterday. And you, you honestly think, what the heck was this guy doing in the five weeks he was off? You know, was he not doing those extras out of training? You know, to 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 bring himself to to the level that he previously was. You know, yeah. he was injured before, so why why isn't he taking that personal accountability during the suspension to put in those extra reps and bring himself to that level? You know what I mean? And then and then you talk about the managerial decision making. You know, there were subs that were made much later than they should have been. Um, you saw Sasha come off at the 81st minute. You know, I understand the situation with Rebellison uh, needing to come off earlier than him. But let's talk about Sasha coming off at halftime. You know, you have willing and able young players who have the energy and longevity to, to, to play out the second half at probably a much better quality than Sasha had. And, and he went off in the 82nd minute. That yeah. is too little too late. That is poor decision making from the manager. Yeah. And I don't want to hear from him too, because Greg also brought up the mentality of, of this bringing a guaranteed three points. And I, I honestly, I don't think he has any place to bring that up because he has all the accountability in the world, you know, and it's, as well as any player does. And, you know, I think the players need to show that they know what the stakes are because this was actually a really important game in our standing in the Western Conference. I mean, this is a very important part of the season where we're, we're just playing between the Western Conference teams. So every point, every victory counts. I mean, Seattle dropped points this weekend, which puts them into striking distance in two games. If we wouldn't have lost points against Kansas City and last night against uh, Vancouver, we would have been, been striking distance of first place in, in the West. Um, and now you have LAFC and and uh, Colorado with 21 points who are now hot on their heels. Two teams that were previously sitting outside of the playoff standings, standings of the Western Conference. So it is it ex- extremely frustrating to see this complete lack of accountability from everybody top to bottom. And it's it's very frustrating because, like Matt said, it's just it's kind of returning to the trend of, of 18, 19 of, of what was so frustrating for us to watch as Galaxy fans. Yeah. We start turning a new leaf and then start curling back. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. We can't let that happen. It, it certainly it certainly felt that way. It, it had a little bit of that. 18 19 feel to it um listen i know we're missing i know we're missing players to international duty right uh and if you look at that list of players that are out on international duty it's a little scary because you know there's what five players that we're missing but let's be honest only two of those players are key players the rest of those guys people gonzalez hasn't played all season with the la galaxy he won't play with the la galaxy right there's talks of him moving on back to Costa Rica. Uh, O'Neill Fisher is a backup that won't see any playtime unless Julian gets hurt or gets called up on international duty, right? Efren is a backup. So really, from that starting lineup, we're only missing Jonah and Sebastian, right, who are, interna- are internationals for their country. So so really, that shouldn't be an excuse as to why we got played, outplayed, right, toe-to-toe no. By the worst team in the league, arguably one of the worst teams in the league. I mean, you know, like I said, Greg himself during that press conference, you know, told me in his opinion, he thought that the players uh, likely thought that they could simply just play at 60% effort during this game after scoring that early goal. And, and they took off their, they took their foot off the pedal, right. And some sort of effort to conserve energy for, for a presumably harder matchup in the midweek. They, they went into yeah. the game thinking, ah, we got this. You know, we got that goal in the fifth minute, man. It's cool. We could just, you know, play it. Half- every single every single individual on that roster needs to pull their own weight. Pull their own weight. Because there is no cruise control of playoffs. There's no cruise control to when we're at full strength again, right? There's no cruise control. There's no guaranteed wins in this league. We've seen that. And, and for some reason, these players still have that mentality, and that, that needs to change. Yeah. And, and listen, I think that this was 90% mental, okay? You, you take in the factors, 10% physical, right, uh, altitude, 
older legs out there. But this was mental. The guys just collapsed mentally, and they gave up on this game. They, they just weren't up for it for whatever reason. Uh, you know, Greg should carry a, a chunk of the load for this loss. His subs were made, his subs were made late. Uh, some of his subs made little sense. Uh, the three center back, the three center back thing towards the end made very little sense to me. No Bring sense. Daniel Stare is on, uh, pushing the wing backs. You know, it just, it, it really made very little sense. Uh, it, it just, it didn't go out as intended. I'm sure there was some intention behind this, but it just didn't play out how it should have played out. Um, I don't know. Bad taste in my mouth. Matt, is there anything else you want to add to this or we pretty much covered on the bad? Um, no, I, I'll just, just little things. Um, the standings, Casey, Casey is right. Um, if, if we win this game, we're, we're actually in second place. Um, but because we don't, uh, we stay in third. Uh, Casey's right. Uh, LAFC and Colorado are right behind us now. Um, and at a, at a very crucial point, um, I think we're, you know, we're on three game away stretch where we have to spend two day, uh, two, uh, half the week, sorry. in uh, in Sandy, Utah. Um, I think when you go into the stretch, you're thinking we'll probably get six points because Vancouver and Dallas and RSL will probably just drop in the middle. Um, but now, uh, because we lost to Vancouver and then the way we lost in which, you know, Rallison got calf cramps, right. Uh, um, Granser's got calf cramps, uh, that's Vasquez, uh, bang knees right before halftime and people are gassed out. Now it's a very real possibility in a three, uh, three game road trip. We're going to get somewhere between zero to two points. Like that's just God's honest truth at this point. Right. Um, and that was that we, we look like we had a guaranteed six in the bag during gold cup. Um, I can't really stress enough how much of like an, uh, a cataclysmic event this was for the galaxy and like the big picture. This really yeah. was like this awful. Yeah. And that's, that's absolutely true. And a lot of the, a lot of the people that, that look at this critically are saying the same thing. You know, it, it's not just this single game. The implication is, 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 is greater because it, 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 because of the condensed schedule we've got coming up, the heavy schedule we got coming up, the matches we have coming up, RSL is never an easy opponent, especially at RSL. It's very realistic. The galaxy possibly sees no points from these upcoming games. You know, we can hope for a one or two, but tough tough to say the least um it is it is a pivotal point right because yeah. either either greg and the boys can you know pull themselves up by the bootstraps get the points that we need to get to the playoffs from this point forward or we just completely crumble and crash and burn under the weight of this this last loss which you know it all depends again we go back to this this talk of mentality right it all depends on their mentality so it'll be interesting to see how this this midweek game pans out well, let's hope for the best. Um, but listen, we talked about the good. Uh, we we talked about the bad. We have to talk about the ugly. So jumping straight into the ugly. Um, oh, boy. Let's talk ugly, right? Now, my friend Matt has done some work for us here for this very specific segment. Uh, I understand, Matt, that you broke down some numbers for us on a very specific player what what's the ugly take on this matt what do you have right. for us <laughs> this is going to be a minute um hit us it's it's kevin cabral again <laughs> um unsurprisingly okay. um look i don't have beef with this guy at all i want people to feel like i'm just picking on him um <laughs> not everything he does is bad he has his moments it's he's very hot cold but i just like it's just like it's it's one good thing and then three bad things with this guy, like every single time, like every time he flashes, like he makes a good run. He finally crosses it when he's supposed to, it's a good pass. It's like, it's, it's amazing. But then there's just like, there's just so many things that he's just like not improving on. And I think mm -hmm. I had touched on this before. It's like, this was the sec, this was the second break that the galaxy have had where Greg really had like 10 days to coach this guy um, mm -hmm. into like what exactly he needs to do with the team to go over film, to like kind of really center in on what the team expects of him and what like the offense is going to do with him. And, uh, and man, did they just like whiff again, my goodness. And, and I think Kobe had even pointed out during the broadcast, like he felt like, um, like uh, Vasquez kept going left to pass to Cabral because he's left footed. 
But if I, but for me watching, like it felt like that was the team dynamic. Like Greg was trying actively to get Cabral involved in the game, but it's just it's like the same mistakes over and over again. You know, like like he doesn't win headers with his height. He just like will not do it. He holds the ball way too long. Like how many times do we see him get the ball on the side? There's an overlap, and he just like he gets too pretty with it. He just holds it, and then the overlaps over, and then you see like Viafani or like Seb like raise their hands. He yeah. just does it like way too often. And then, like, he gets too cute with the ball, and he takes on his dribbles, and then, too often. And then he just – too often, and then he loses it. There are times yeah. he's taking on these dribbles, like, in the middle of the field. Like, even if you even if you got past that guy, like, you're not in a scoring position. No one's with you. It's, like, it's just unnecessarily uh, risky. And, like, just the amount of times he gets pushed off the ball, it was just over and over and over <laughs> again. Like, God, I don't think I've ever seen a player with, like, less hold of play than, like, this guy. He, you know, and, and he just – what? And I, I told you guys on that in that in our in our chat, this guy really needs to start consuming more Herbalife products. <laughs> <laughs> he gets pushed off the ball way too easy, man. He needs to bulk up a little. But you know what? It's not even, like, just that. It's, like, a mentality thing. You know, you don't have to, like, be big to be scrappy. Right. You don't have to be big to have fight, right? Like – he just doesn't have like a good mentality on it. And like, right. I think even on the discord, uh, vapor aid and, and pocket, we're talking about how, like, if this guy was a G2 player or an American, we'd probably be like mildly excited for him based on what we've seen, but we would have never paid him DP money. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. Like, it just like, if you just take the fact that like, he's a French international out of it, like this guy's just not worth the money. Mm -hmm. Um, and even worse than that, like he's like a project. Like you don't spend BP money on a project. Maybe you throw TAM money. Maybe you do a U22 yeah. initiative. You don't put a BP tag on a project. So um, I was talking to uh, Turbo Skin on the other uh, Discord, sure. and 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 uh, we came up with where exactly does Cabral rank in terms of his offensive effectiveness among DPs <laughs> of a similar position? I need to know. I need to know. Perfect. Hit is us it, with is it, it, Matt. Is, is it just me, guys? Or is like, are my, are my, is he see me? Or is he just like in the big round of things? Like, how does he stack up? So um, so if you search like M a list of MLS DP, there's a link on there. You can find it yourself. And you actually uh, break it down by age, um, the salary amount that they collect, and then position. So I wasn't going to do all DPs because that's not fair. It's not fair to compare him to like Alan Franco, center back, right? That, sure. like, that doesn't make sense. So I only compared him to wingers and forwards um, because – whether we're running a 4-4-2 or 4-3-3, like that's going to be effectively what he's going to be doing. Sure. Um, so there were, according to the DP list, there were 19 people, including Cabral, that are DPs who play that position. And out of the 19 people, there's only three players in the entire league who are less productive than him. And by product and by wow. productivity, it's I did goals plus assists, so goal involvements, um, and then divided by appearances, um, because most DPs. I don't want to go by minutes. I don't have that kind of time on a Sunday. Most DPs will play, <laughs> will start and play the whole game, right? right? So, like, let's just let's just go that way. Um, so, there's only three people who are less effective than Kevin Cabral. Um, FC Cincinnati, it's Lacadia. He had uh, nine appearances, two starts, only one goal. Only played 362 minutes this year. He, if if you're familiar with him, he literally played himself out of the starting lineup, and his loan's done. They're happy wow. to see him leave. Yeah. Um, Colorado, uh, Namley. He has four appearances, four starts, no goals, no assists, two ninety minutes. But it's almost not even like fair to include him because only four appearances. Um, so I don't know that I would actually include him. And then the last one would have been Darren Quintero from Houston, who has who does not start anymore. Appeared seven times, only played one hundred and thirty-five minutes, and has no goals and assists. So right. he's also older. People, he's thirty-three. Yeah. yeah, he's an older guy. So in terms of like at least my interpretation of it. Um, there's only out of all the DP wingers and forwards in the entire league, there's only two people in the entire league who are worse than Kevin Cabral. Wow. Who are, who are a bigger waste of money. That puts him in the bottom 15% of DP wingers uh, and forwards. The third worst in the entire league. Wow. So, and I had this discussion with another person on the Discord. See, I read the Discord. I, I interact on there, guys. This uh, guy, Alex, I don't know what the numbers after his name are. But he had brought the point that, like, well, he's a young DP. There are different expectations for this guy, sure. which I inherently agree, disagree with. A DP is a DP. If you're going to put the tag, if you're going to collect the paycheck, if you're going to cash that money, if you're going to wear three purses on your Instagram, all Louis Vuitton, then you, then you need to meet expectations. So there are five 
out of the, that 19, there are five people on that DP list, including Cabral, who would fall under the young DP list. For, for, for people who aren't familiar, that's the DPs who are 23 years old or younger. Yeah. Um, there's five of them. And all of those people are much better than Kevin Cabral. He is the very worst of that list. So it ain't an age thing, okay? So then I thought to myself, hmm, it is his first year. He's got to get used to the league because the grass grows greener in, in the United States and the air is different than it is in France. So I looked up, of those five DPs, how many other people besides Cabral are in their first year? And there's two other people in their first year who are either younger than Cabral or the same age as Cabral and they're still performing better than him. Like, I cannot express my frustration more with, like, Derek's no excuse for why he's playing so poorly. Yeah. Like, literally none. And and I brought up on the last podcast about uh, 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 Pavone. Pavone, when he came, would have been a young DP as well. We already know what his stats were. Yeah. Um, so I cannot express more frustration and, like, more annoyance at the amount of excuses that people will make for Cabral. Um I had discussed earlier with you, Chris, a, 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 a podcast and podcasts sure. ago, like that we weren't sure if Cabral and Gransford together were going to hit 16 goals. Mm -hmm. um, that seems like that's not going to happen at all <laughs> um, <laughs> no. by any stretch of the imagination. So during the Galaxy game, I know this is a long rant, so during the Galaxy game um, on the bottom ticker, it was discussing Ephra's new contract. And it brought up a couple of stats that I didn't, I did, I were, I didn't realize about Ephra. Uh, he's uh, played in 41 games. He has 18 starts. And over that time period, he has four goals and five assists. Okay. So if you do some funny math over like a season, essentially, four goals and five assists. Okay. Kevin Cabral, you need to be better than Ephra. Ephra is the Galaxy's favorite punching bag. If you cannot be better than Ephra, <laughs> I give up. Um, you got to at least beat that man. Yeah, man. And listen, young, young DPs, the age, right? We've seen young DPs be successful in this league before. You know, you mentioned Christian Pavone, who came here when he was, what, 22, 23, right around the same age as, as Cabral. And we saw what Christian Pavone did for this team. He earned that paycheck. You look at guys like Miguel Almiron for, for, for Atlanta United. When he came, he was, what, 22, 23? Yeah, 22. Same Diego, deal. Diego Rossi came in at 20. Yeah. Diego Rossi Brenner, came in at 20. Brenner, Brenner's 21. He's more productive. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think there's another guy, Ants and Sola. He's more productive. Um, oh, yeah. So, so Toldo at uh, at uh, Toronto. He's more productive. It's this misnomer that like just because he's young, just because it's his first year, he can't succeed. <laughs> like that's a bunch of BS, man. That's like legit. Right. Talk. I mean, look, you 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 hire an accountant, young or old, you're still counting on that account to not make you go bankrupt, right? So yeah. You, the job is the same, right? Young or old. So you're getting the paycheck. You got to put up the numbers. I mean. Sure. Is he a finished product? No. Is he as good as he's ever going to be? No. But you're making one point something million dollars per season and you're designated player. You have to show better than one single goal and one assist in how many games now? It's unacceptable, right? So... Listen, Ryan has been with us for three games now, and he's a center defensive midfielder who is playing center back, and he has more goals than you twice, <laughs> twice the amount of goals that you have. You know, uh, it's not it's not an excuse; it's inexcusable. Uh, Matt, I agree with absolutely everything you said. Um, I, I I don't know. I have my own ugly take uh, regarding this, and it does include Cabral. Casey, I'll ask you first, man. And I know you talked a little bit about it already. You had an ugly take, but uh, is there anything else to add to that? Do you have anything else? I mean, no, that, that, that was kind of kind of it, you know, but I think in talking about Cabral and, and the, the whole DP situation, you know, I think I, I, I just have the hope that we're not kind of falling into, you know, former trends of putting up vast amounts of money for unproven um, you know, pieces of talent. So, of course, we've seen those uh, exorbitant contracts of the last two or three seasons that didn't exactly pan out. And, you know, you're hopeful that it doesn't happen again. But, you know, it's, yeah. it's obviously not the same story for every player. Yeah. Um, look, we're on the topic of DPs, right? We're talking about DPs already as it is. We, 
my ugly take for this, and it's ongoing. I've talked about it before on the show. We are once again essentially playing without any designated players on the pitch. Javier is hurt. It's the exact same injury he suffered from last year. Same leg, same calf. If if last season was any indication, it's likely that he will be out for a couple of more weeks, uh, possibly more, right? Uh, he's obviously older. It's, it's a re-injury of the same leg, the same muscle. Things get worse over time. That's just how it is. You re-injure the same, the same uh, muscle. It, it, it doesn't heal the same. So he might be out longer, right? We don't know yet. Uh, so he's out for the foreseeable future. Jonathan Dos Santos, he struggled with injuries all season. He's obviously not here because of international duty. I have very little confidence that we're going to see Jonathan Dos Santos as a constant starter for this LA Galaxy, even after he comes back from, from international duty. So we're seeing ourselves in a position where we're playing without DPs once again. And it, it, it's it's like a trend with the LA Galaxy now for a couple of years, right? Where our DPs can't seem to stay healthy enough um, to all be playing on the field at the same time. I know Kevin Cabral is technically a DP, uh, but he's been out there playing like an academy kid, playing his first pro season. Um, Listen, this is MLS, and we have a salary cap. We have all of these roster restrictions. The DP, the DPs in this league, they weigh extremely heavy in this league, okay? You literally can't be a serious team that's going to make it far into the playoffs if your DPs are not on the field and they are producing and they're out there firing on all cylinders and yet here we have it in LA that we're playing without our DPs yet again. It's getting really old. Uh, it's constant. And it's costing us games at this point. That's my ugly take. We continue this. Uh, and I have very little confidence in, in, in these players. If, if Chicharito's healthy, he's out there. Listen, I'm confident that he'll try to get a goal for us, right? Every single game. I just, I'm not very confident in his legs right now. You know, especially after it's 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 the same injury, same leg at his age. Is it going to come back and bite us in the butt? I don't know. Jonathan Dos Santos? I don't know. Big question marks. That's my ugly take. I don't know. You guys have anything else to add to that or anything else? I just still, you know, I still have some nerves um, from, the you know, the Gold Cup absences as well, just because there is still so much left to be played. I know we're just out of the group stage, but still plenty of time for injuries to happen. And, you know, Legette has been balling out for the national team. I wish him all of the best. Um, and I pray every night. That he <laughs> Take your, um, you know, along with, prayers. along with our other gold cup absences. So uh, that's just, that's just my biggest concern. I really hope that, that we don't suffer any more injuries at this point. Absolutely, man. I agree. Um, but I think that pretty much covers it, man. I, I feel a lot better after just venting all of this out, all of this frustration. <laughs> it's been a rough week. There's been a lot in my brain. It's it's a lot to wrap around, a lot of negative stuff floating around. Definitely needed the Galaxy to win, but they didn't come through. So hopefully we'll see them win this, 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 this Wednesday uh, against RSL. We'll say our prayers, baby Jesus, whatever deities you guys worship out there. And uh, hopefully they come through for us, okay? Uh, somebody will have to sacrifice a lamb. Uh, but but uh, let's stay optimistic, right, guys? Um, because it's it's uh, 2021. But uh, I think we're good. We covered everything, guys. Anything else we need to add or we head hopefully, out? Uh, Hopefully no ducks on the field. I think if you had seen that game against RSL where we got blasted six to two, there was a, a duck on the field. They're incredibly territorial animals. Yeah. Uh, they will spam your life incessantly with quacks nonstop. They belong nowhere near a soccer field. I hope there are no ducks on the field. It's random, but apparently that's something we need to be concerned of. <laughs> right. Yeah. Hey, man, listen. Um, keep ducks out of soccer. Keep ducks out of soccer. <laughs> I've never known a duck that can play soccer, man. No, man. <laughs> Wrong sport. Man, 
I really only enjoy duck one way, and that's in a nice duck riet. <laughs> <laughs> right on, man. So from uh, three regular guys here, just three regular guys having fun, uh, absolutely stress-free. We thank you guys once again for watching the show, for the continuous for the continuous support, bottom of our hearts. I know I speak for, for Matt and Casey when I say that. Thanks again for tuning in. We will see you guys next week. Uh, I do have some stuff that I'm working on for you guys, uh, aside from the podcasting, because, you know, podcasting is kind of boring, right? I <laughs> uh, got some, some, some funner videos planned for you guys, something a little more fun, um, like a side project type of thing. More on that in the coming days. But uh, I think we're good. Uh, Casey, thanks for making the time, brother. I know uh, you're probably due for some more meds. I can see a little bit of pain in your eyes. <laughs> uh, speedy recovery. Thanks, thanks for having me. <laughs> uh, Matt, thanks again, brother, for making it on, making the time for this. Uh, thanks again for the insight. And uh, I will be talking to you guys soon. From Chris Maldonado, the Galaxy Guy podcast. You guys have an excellent week. Los quiero. Bye-bye.